past that now. There are no crystals here. We have to keep going. What do you want? I've no coin on me. Just information. Has a cell sword passed through here? Grey hair. Now you mention it. There was a young man with salt in his mane sneaking around out there a while back. Which way did he go? I... How am I supposed to know? I'll get off down the road, I expect. Now why don't you do the same and leave me be? not, good sir. Thanks to your timely intervention. More importantly, we have arrived. Now, feast your eyes upon the marvel before us. Ruins, a relic of the fallen civilization. A sight so common that man is oft blinded to its wonder. Colossal vessels, dashed from the very heavens. Airships, we call them with very little thought to what wonders such a word might describe. Oblige me, if you would. Does anything strike you as peculiar about this particular specimen? Though we ourselves find fallen ruins to be nigh indestructible, whatever gouged the final sin from the rock cleaved clean through the structure you see before you. A tantalizing mystery, no doubt, but merely one of countless enigmas in which Zemeckian history is steeped. Come, good sir. Our expedition continues, and we still have much to learn. <sighs> He's passionate. I'll give him that. I don't want any trouble. Neither do I. I'm looking for someone. A grey-haired mercenary. Well, we haven't seen him. Yes, we have. We saw him climbing up the rocks. Those ones, over there. Maybe he found his thieves. Mum won't let me near them. She said there's goblins up there, and that they eat little boys for dinner. Shush, now. You've said quite enough already. I only told him what you said. I'd listen to your mother if I were you.
Joseph's thieves really locked their stolen wares all the way out here. Found our thieves. They don't look happy to see me. Let's get this over with. Stop! Don't kill him, he's just protecting his home. Joseph? So the boy was right? I don't know you. Your porter friend sent me to find you. She was worried you might have got yourself killed. Have I been gone that long? It wasn't hard finding the thieves. The problem was knowing what to do with them when I did. I take it things are more complicated than they appear. I'd all but ruled out bandits before I even left the market. You know what that is? Because our thieves had no interest in gold or gems or anything they couldn't eat for that matter. Add to that the rumors of goblins in the area and the mystery practically solved itself. I soon found their cozy little homestead and all the missing food. I launched myself at them, full of righteous fury, but their leader was the only one who moved to meet me. The others, they huddled around that food, ready to die protecting it. They stole because it was that or starvation. And I've been there myself, back when times were hard. So you spared them? and earn their trust into the bargain by the look of it. These goblins aren't native to the area. They don't know how to survive such barren lands, so... I've been teaching them. And once they've learned to hunt and forage, they won't be fool enough to risk their necks in Bokalad. I'm impressed. I didn't know goblins could be reasoned with. Do me a favor. Let the porter know I'm safe. I'll head back to the market once my work here is done. Oh, and... Don't mention the goblins. I don't want people coming here brandishing pitchforks. Not now this lot have sworn off thieving. Your secret's safe with me. I appreciate it. Thank you.
Not again. All right then. Who's first? <sighs> It's over! You're going to get yourself killed. Oh, that would not do. That would not do at all. Not when such majesty stretches out before us. Behold, the final sin in all its glory. As Moss tells us, a battle was fought here in ancient times. A battle of such ferocity that it tore a great crater in the very land upon which it was waged. In reaching for their holy sanctum did man enrage the gods. And great was the vengeance that was rained down upon him. Alas, the full truth of the matter is lost to time. Though I live in hope that I might see it discovered. But we must not dwell upon such things. There is more yet to see. Onward! History awaits!
get him. Go! Over here! Still in one piece? It would seem so. Once more, I am in your debt. And once more, you impress me with your prowess. These were no ordinary foes, but ones we in the field call Echoes. Though Moss the Chronicler concurs with the legends in attributing the fall of Zemeckis to a wrath wrought upon mankind by the gods, he offers little in the way of explanation. Could the ruins we see before us here, in all their elaborate beauty, perhaps suggest an answer? Could the construction of such miraculous edifices have been considered an encroachment upon the province of the divine? Alas, all is mere speculation. But one day, perhaps, I will learn the truth. Not if you keep running headfirst into trouble. You are right, of course. And not only have you plucked me repeatedly from the jaws of death, you have proven yourself a willing audience to my ramblings. Glad to help, but didn't you say you came here to investigate something? I fear I may have rather overstated the case on that front. In truth, a captive ear was all I really desired. You see, even my fellow scholars have grown somewhat weary of my musings of late. And so I came upon the idea of purchasing a companion. A captive audience, if you will. That's what this was all about. I am afraid so. And now, my good man, it is high time we returned whence we came. Fine. Just don't go running off this time. And so ends a delightful day. Here, your reward for humoring my selfish whims, plus a little extra for the trouble I have put you to. Joseph's fine. He'll be back once he's tied up a few loose ends. <sighs> That's a weight off my shoulders. He certainly knows his business. He found your thieves all right. And I dare say they won't be coming back. A good man to have around, that Joseph. And if he says there'll be no more thieving, that's good enough for me. Thank you for putting my mind at ease. Here, for your troubles. Carry your goods. I'm cheap. 
Peaches and pears. Come on, come on. Jug of snake spit for the road. The caravan stops next. Juicy pears. What I really want to be is. A... Here you are, good. Try not to lose it again. Me pass. You found it. Oh. Thank you so much. Nan would have killed me if I'd come back without it. I'll have to say thanks to Ellen, Theo, too. So should you, Hansa. You and your friends don't have to steal anymore. If anyone threatens you again, you know who to turn to. We do. And we already have. Ms. Ell's given us a job shifting the chocobo shit out the stables. It's hard work, and the pay isn't half what we got from the stones. But if we stick at it, we'll keep ourselves fit. <laughs> You stick at it, then. And Gates, I'm sorry for stealing your pass. Uh, that's all right. I've got it back now. Uh, and all's well that ends well, eh? You said you're trained to be a blacksmith, right? Well, I'm going to be your first customer. I'm going to save up all my gear and get you to make me a massive sword. I'll, I'll do me best. <laughs> Till then, eh? Place on the wagon. Remember, Goots, we're mercenaries. You hide us to protect you. M mercenaries. <laughs> and you remember the plan? You're to ride all the way to Twinside. Jill and I will go with you as far as the outskirts, then find our own way in. I'll buy that stuff I need. Right. And we'll scout out the Imperials' defences. There's a square with a big bell tower right in the middle of town. If you get lost, or out goes wrong, we can meet up there. All right. Let's go. Certain your father has no knowledge of Ultima. I am. I have no difficulty believing a sinister force has come to exert an influence on Sanbrek. But be that as it may, it is yet to claim my father. For better or worse, his radiance speaks his own mind. Then the fiend works from the shadows. I confess. When first you told me of this fiend, I had my doubts, and more than a few at that. A beast that labors to plunge Valisthea into turmoil, all in pursuit of your brother. But that wound is proof enough that evil is afoot. Then I have your answer, your highness. You will join me in my fight. I cannot. Not yet. Your Highness, please. As you are aware, the Dalmechian army is at our gates. They have lost their mother crystal, and with it all hope of a negotiated withdrawal. It is but a matter of time before they invade. If Bahamut is not here to meet them, my people will be slaughtered. Though not by Hugo Kupka, thanks to Ultima's machinations. I know the fate of your people weighs heavy on your conscience, but if we do not put an end to Ultima's plans, they shall face a far darker fate. The chaos he would wreak would sweep all of Valisthea into the abyss. The lives of every man, woman, and child in the Twins are at stake. I believe what you say, Phoenix. 
But I have duties of my own, and I must discharge them. Come what may. What do you know of my blood? I know that it is wholly unworthy of the highest offices of state, which rightly belong to those of purer breeding. Alas. Your bloodline runs through the Oriflam gutter, from a whore who weighed her child's worth in gill. Have you threatened my father? <laughs> of course not. I merely whispered in his ear that his mongrel son is plotting a rebellion. What? Sylvester listens to the words of his astrologers. And they have ears too. You have been feeding them your lies! Should you remain loyal to Emperor Olivier, his radiance may yet crown your head with laurel, and not with tar. <gasps> Fork-tongued witch! In consideration of your long years of service to the Empire, I shall forgive this uncharacteristic rudeness. Now hurry and make ready, your Imperial Highness. Emperor Olivier expects much of you, Dion. Or should I say, of Bahamut. May your fire reduce his enemies to ash. Till all of Valisthea bows to its rightful ruler. There is another darkness that has taken hold of Sandbrack. And until its grip is released, the flames of war shall spread ever wider, just as Ultima wishes. Forgive me. My family has caused you much grief. You are not her keeper, Phoenix. This is a matter for the Imperial household now, and as a member of that household, it falls to me to resolve it. At such time as that is done, what strength I have shall be yours. Thank you, Your Highness. Hmm. Let us take to the skies together and bring a new dawn to Valisthea. I should like nothing more. Terence. My prince. Tell me true. Do you believe what I'm about to do is wrong? I... We Dragoons have but one leader, Your Highness. And we shall follow him unto the very end. Thank you. This is my decree. For their crimes against the Crown, the traitorous Annabella and her usurping son shall be put to death and the Empire restored.
One would never guess that these people stood on the brink of war. And they're afraid. They turn to drink to forget their fears. Anything you want to forget? The harbor is empty, and half the market stores too. The city may seem peaceful on the surface, but it's balanced on a knife edge. Were we to give it a nudge, it might be just the distraction we need to reach the Mother Crystal. I thought you might say that. We should send for Gav. We'll need someone to keep the fires we start from going out. And we can busy ourselves scheming until he gets here. I'll send a stolas then. What's happening? I don't know. Togol! On fire. I'm sure Goots is fine. He'll be making for the square. Bits. The one with the bell tower. In the middle of town, right? going on let's go and see right but first we find goods I just hope he's all right do that identify yourself we have to
them down! Be glad to fall into a sewer. Goods left. Where in Riga's name did you come from? Get him! Over here! 
this one.
That's better. Can you see him anywhere? Get him! 
Toggle! 